The Gospel of Mark, chapter 2. Jesus heals a paralytic. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come. So many gathered there that was no left, and there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralytic, carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus, and after digging through it, lowered the mat the paralyzed man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there, thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts, and he said to them, Why are you thinking these things? Which is easier? To say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, Get up, take your mat and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I tell you, get up. Take your mat and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Well, that, was, that was really good. That kind of gave me chills. <clears throat> the calling of Levi. Once again, Jesus went out beside the lake. A large crowd came to him, and he began to tease, teach them. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphysus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him, and Levi got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the teachers of the law were with or the Pharisees saw him eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, Why does he eat with the tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. Jesus questioned about fasting. That was good, too. Like, now, John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. Some people came and asked Jesus, How is it that John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees are fasting, but yours are not? Jesus answered, How can the guests of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? They cannot, so long as they have him with them. But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, and on that day they will fast. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. If he does, the new piece will pull away from the old, making the tear worse. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the wineskins will be ruined. No, he pours new wine into new wineskins. Lord of the Sabbath. <clears throat> One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heeds of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing this in the unlawful on the Sabbath? He answered, Have you never read what David did when he and his companion were hungry and in need? In the days of Abertar, the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat, and he also gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even on the Sabbath. Another time he went into the synagogue, and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man with the shriveled hand, Stand up in front of everyone. Then Jesus asked them, Which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to evil, to save life or to kill? But they remained silent. He looked around at them in anger and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts, said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was completely restored. Then the Pharisees went out again to plot against the heretics on how they might kill Jesus. Crowds followed Jesus. Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the lake, and a large crowd from Galilee followed. When they heard all he was doing, many people came to him from Judea, Jerusalem, Udemia, in the regions across the Jordan and around the Tyre and Sidon. Because of the crowd, he told his disciples to have a small boat ready for him, to keep the people from crowding him. For he had healed many, so that those with the diseases were pushing forward to touch him. Whenever the evil spirits saw him, 
They fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. But he gave them strict orders not to tell who he was. The pointing of the twelve apostles. Jesus went up in the hills and called to him those who, who wait wanted, and they came to him. He appointed twelve, designating them apostles, that they might be with him, and that he might send them out to preach, and ha to have the authority to drive out demons. These are the twelve he appointed, Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. To them he gave the name Borangers, which means sons of thunder. Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphasus, Thaddeus, Simon, Zelot, and Judas, who betrayed him. Jesus and Beelzebub. They entered. Jesus then. Jesus entered a house, and again a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. When his family heard of this, they went to take charge of him. But they said. He is out of his mind. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Beelzebub. By the prince of demons he is driving out demons. So Jesus called them and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house and carry off the possessions unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can rob his house. I tell you the truth, all the sins and blasphemies of men will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemies against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. He is guilty of an eternal sin. He said this because they were saying, he has an evil spirit. Jesus' mother's mother and brothers. Then Jesus, his mother, and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mothers and brothers, he asked. Then he looked at the, those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mothers and brothers. Whoever does God's will is brothers and sisters and mothers. The parable of the sour. On another occasion, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in on it on the lake. While all the people were along the shore of the water's edge, he taught them many things about parables. And in teaching, he said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow a seed. As he, uh, as he was, wait, this is chapter 4. On another occasion, Jesus began to teach, okay, Listen, a farmer went out to sow seed. As he was scouting the seed, he fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell in rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants, so that they did not bear grain. Still other seeds fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop multiplying thirty, sixty, or even a hundred times. Then Jesus said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. When he was alone, the twelve and the others around him asked him about the parables. He told them, The secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to those on the outside everything is said in parables, so that they may be ever seeing but never perceiving, and ever hearing but never understanding. Otherwise they may turn and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to them, Don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The Father sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the world, world is, word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown to them. Others, like the seed sown on rocky places, hear the word at once, receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seeds sown among thorns, hear the word. But the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desire for other things come in and choke the world, making it unfruitful. Others, like seeds sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop thirty, sixty, or even a hundred times what was sown. A lamp on the stand. He said to them, Do you bring in a lamp to put it under a bowl or a bed? Instead, don't you put it on a stand? For whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed, and whatever is concealed is meant to be brought out and open. If he has ears to hear, 
Let him hear. Consider carefully what you hear, he continued. With the measured use, it will be measured to you, and even more. Whosoever has will be given more. Who, whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. That's, that's rough. The parable of the growing I'll reread that right there. It goes from 1 to 7. Consider carefully what you hear, he continued. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you, and even more. Whoever has will, whoever has, will be given more. And whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. So if you don't have a lot, even that will be taken from you. Whoever has will be given more. If you have a lot, you'll be given more. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. Okay, I may not seem very rich or not, but I do have a lot, and I'm really, really thankful for that. I just want to pause here in the middle of Mark chapter 4. Um, and I am thankful that I have a lot of that. Yeah. Okay, the parable of the mustard seed. Again, he said, What shall we say the kingdom of God is like, or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed you plant in the ground. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that the birds of the air perch in its shape. With many similar parallels, parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. That's good. <clears throat> Jesus calms the storm. See, I'm looking over this because um, this is Mark chapter 4. I, 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 I suppose I, I was... Um, I kept going here. Um, Jesus comes to storm. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side, leaving the crowd behind. They took him along, just as he was, in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waters, what, waves, water and waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still not have faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obeyed him. And that was uh, Mark chapter 4, chapter 2, and chapter 3. So that was Mark chapter 2, chapter 3, and chapter 4. They all kind of go together. And um, they, they are really, really um, the most, uh, some of the most moving parts of the Bible. Um, as I go over 13 minutes here, I was only planning on reading the one chapter, um, chapter 2. However, I didn't even notice it, and before I knew it, I, I was in chapter 2, 3, and 4, because uh, they all went together, um, and uh, I, I didn't even notice the, the chapter changing. Uh, that was a, a really great piece of uh, writing, and it was really beautiful, uh, in my opinion. Those chapters, chapter 2, I'm getting a little chilled up, because it was really good. Uh, Chapter 2 through chapter 4 of Mark, that was um, really a beautiful thing. Okay, it uh, looks like coming up here we're going to have chapter 5, which starts with the heading, The Healing of a Demon-Possessed Man. I'm reading here this Holy Bible right here, it's the New International Version, um, which I feel is like a better version to read. This particular edition was came out... It's an easier version to read this, of course, definitely. Uh, the Holy Bible, New International Version, copyright, 1973-1978, uh, International Bible Society. Um, that's where this actual book is really ancient right here. But um, I, I like it a lot. It's a Hawaii version. Um, on, this, on the cover, it says Commemorative Bible. And um, then it says uh, this Hawaii word right here. The life of the land is perpetual in righteousness. Ua ma ke ea o ka aina i ka pono. It's uh, definitely one of the best books I've ever read.
No matter what religion are you, it's one of the best books ever. Okay, I'm trying to end this video here. I'm so tired that I want to read more, but I am really tired.